Hey, what is going on, my peoples? It is February 9th, 2016. I'm late with this video. I'm on the uh, Super Bowl was Sunday. Before I get started, I mean, you guys can't see, and I did that on purpose. My hair is kind of raggedy. Um, This morning, I got up, and I wet it up so I can, you know, style it, as I do for work. And, I, you know, I wet it all nice and, and everything. I was like, you know, it was all spiky. I was like, damn, my hair looks stylish. And I never put any gel on it. Like, I just... I just completely forgot to put gel on my hair. And then I got to work and I was like, damn it. <laughs> but anyways, like I gotta say, it was, we're two days removed from the Super Bowl. Uh, the Denver Broncos winded up being your winners for the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 50 in San, San Francisco, Santa Clara. Big shout outs to Vernon Davis, our boy, even though he didn't, you know, really play a big role since being traded to the Broncos. I believe he was on the field for maybe one or two plays. I saw number 85, or number, is he 80? He's 80 over there. You know, he was there mainly for blocking. And Vernon Davis, hey, I know this was a Carolina Bronco, you know, like matchup, but the only reason why I had any vested interest in this game, to be honest, to be 100% real with my peoples, is because I wanted Vernon Davis to get the ring. That, that's all I really cared about. I was the only reason why I was going for anybody was because I wanted to see Vernon Davis get his ring. At this point, it's more of a legacy ring, but he has his ring. I mean, it has the wrong team on it, but he has his ring. All the hard work and all your blood, sweat, tears, aches, body pains, everything that you did for the San Francisco 49ers as a fan, as a fan of the team, a fan of you personally, congratulations, sir. You got your ring. And I'm I'm very happy for you. All right, so now we get to the game. Um, the game was actually kind of weird. I I think going in, people expected it to be a Carolina blowout. Every every professional radio analyst were proclaiming, you know, Carolina to be 14 point favorites. And I never saw it that way. Like I knew Carolina was good and they had the potential. But the number one defense, I mean, they were number one for a reason. I mean, you have somebody like DeMarco Ware and Vaughn Miller in the front rushing somebody. And the rest of that defense is not weak. Like, they ain't the only two people. Like, those are the people I know because, frankly, I don't follow the Broncos. But I do know those two players, and they're really good. So if you have them two up front and you have a good defense behind that, they were number one for a reason. And after I saw Carolina almost choke, a 31-point lead against Seattle, which the defense is just as equivalent, honestly. I, I knew that if the defense stepped up, that the Broncos had, barring a Petty Manning choke job, because he's really used to doing that, would, would have a good chance of winning. And sure enough, Von Miller had two forced fumbles, which turned to 14 points, and they just... Carolina couldn't do anything really big for sustained periods. Like, did they get, I believe they got, they got one touchdown off of them. And, but, man, that defense, and Vaughn Miller and DeMarco Ware just basting it, just putting pressure on the O-line, putting pressure up front. Carolina had no run game. Cam Newton almost had no chance of, of really succeeding in that scenario, and that's what we saw. We saw a young team being exposed by by just stingy defenses. And uh, congrats to, to those gentlemen as well. And um, I guess we're going to come back, and this is going to be kind of a, a, not a negative thing, but it's going to be my, my, my takeaway from this whole game, like saying that I didn't have any type of, you know, uh, horse in the race. The, the one thing I'm going to take away is it, it was a fairly good game. It went a little bit opposite than what I think most were expecting, even myself included. I expected it to be 24-21 in favor of Denver. I didn't expect Denver to kind of make it a two-score a two score game. Um, I feel bad for Eli. Eli is no longer the, the best Manning. <laughs> um, but the one thing I took away, and, and it doesn't necessarily bug me, but I don't like how – and it might get a little bit – it might get a little bit political here, and I don't want this to turn into a political type of really anything. But Cam Newton, come on, man. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, throughout this whole season of going 15-1, and 
all the playoff games that you guys won, it was smiles, it was dabbing, it, it was Superman, it was all these things that you were doing. You know, the the first down flicker. I'm gonna see where where is this? Right, the first down flicker. You know, it was all of that stuff. And then you you taste bitter defeat. You taste bitter defeat. And you're going to act the way that you did in the press conference. A, like a mopey little child. Come on, man. You are a professional. And and what I hate about it is when he got called out on this, it turned to, well, the, some of the, the comments I read on Twitter were, oh, well, just because he's not your classic white obedient quarterback, everybody wants to jump on this case. Oh, nobody would have said anything if Peyton Manning would have lost and acted the same way. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. This ain't a black and white thing. This happens to be that you are a professional. You have a job. Just because things don't go your way doesn't mean you get to mope and act the way that you did. Again, like a little child. That was childish. When you could have set the tone, you are the face of that franchise. There are other people who are well known, but you are the face of that franchise. You are the one who represents the Carolina Panthers during commercials, and that's the way you act after defeat? Like a child? You you, you got to get out of that. Now, before anybody jumps on my case, oh, you're just saying that because he's black. I'm not just saying that because he's black. Josh Norman, the DB, the cornerback, he, he's been beasting it all year as well. Had, had a pretty solid game against Denver for, for what they could do. He was crying, and, you know, like, again, I didn't have a vested horse in this race. You know, he was crying after the game, and, you you know, he had tears. And it's understandable. You get to the biggest game of your career, and you don't know if you're going to go back there again. They have a solid team. Doesn't, doesn't mean they're going to be back there again. This could have been his one and only chance. Hopefully it's not, because, honestly, I, I, after the Super Bowl, I grew to respect Josh Norman. He did what he did. He went out there, he cried, and he was all somber. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't act like a little a little child at the press conference. He he went out there and he did his job. He did what he had to do. He went out there like and he stated it. He didn't feel like talking to the press. He straight out came out like, I don't even feel like talking to y'all. And he went on with his emotions and he did what he had to do. That right there is manning up. Yeah, he didn't want to be there. He even stated it as much. I don't have a problem with you not wanting to be there. It's understandable why you don't want to be there, why you don't want to do that part of the job, especially when you just lost the Super Bowl. But he did it. He's an unrestricted free agent this year. I hope he gets paid. That's how much respect I have for this cat. I hope he gets paid. If he doesn't win one with the Panthers, I hope somewhere in his career that he can get a ring. Because there are not enough class personalities and athletes like that man in this league. Even in, in defeat, he stated his emotions. He went up there and finished his job, which includes the press conference. That's why you get fined if you don't show up. Josh Norman, I hope at some point in your career, you get your ring. I wish you nothing but the best. Since you unrestricted, how about you come to the Niners? Because we can really use a DB. Yeah, York, if you hear me, Trent Balky, we can use a DB of his caliber. Sign that man if we can. Maybe, you know, he'll get a ring with the, with the Niner logo on there. Now, I don't want to focus just on the actual losers of the game. Uh, well, not losers, I guess, the, the people who got defeated. I you can't really call them losers. Well, Cam Newton, I'll call you loser. I don't really care. You know, Josh Norman, you ain't a loser, man. You just happen to be bested that day. Now, this was won by the defense. The Denver Bronco defense won this game. Won it. Peyton Manning didn't do jack. Peyton Manning had one of those games that he always has throughout the playoffs, throughout his whole career. He he essentially choked. If Carolina could have gotten some sort of offense rolling, Carolina takes this game. But the defense made sure that wasn't the case. The Denver Broncos defense won this game and gifted a second ring to Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning 
for all the records that he has during the regular season, he is a choke artist in the playoffs. That man is overrated. It doesn't matter what you do in the regular seasons, what you do during the big games. And yeah, he might have two rings, but those rings didn't come under with his arm. They didn't come through him. Those rings came because the two years he won them, he actually had a solid defense. When he won it in Indy, it was through the defense that was led by Dwight Freeney. This year, a defense that was led by DeMarco Ware and Von Miller. And that's how he has two rings. Because every other time that the that games have depended on him, he's thrown multiple pick games. He's choked. He hasn't really thrown anything. He couldn't even manage a, 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 an offense. During the times that he won, he didn't even play well, maybe he played a Trent Dilfer style quarterback when Trent Dilfer won it, won it with the Ravens. Now, this is what's going to get me is I got on Cam Newton for being a child after losing and acting all mopey and everything. Now, Peyton Manning, whoo, man, fuck you, you overrated piece of shit. For all the hate that Tom Brady has gotten, when that man has won, he's made sure to celebrate with his team. Make sure to give thanks to his team. Whether or not he was the MVP of those particular Super Bowls or not, he made sure that he thanked his team. The first two people that this dude, the first person, well at least on camera, that showed him hugging was fucking Papa John. And then they're going to pull him for an interview on the field. And he's talking about how he's going to drink Budweiser. And he's just plugging his sh Come on, man. That's the most classless act I have seen from a quarterback who didn't contribute to actually winning the game. Start plugging your future through Budweiser and Papa John's on the field. Not going with everybody on the defense who you owe this ring to people who put up with your limp arm this entire year no you're gonna go and plug Budweiser and hug Papa John man get out I hope you retire I hope you never come back and just to spite your ass I hope that Eli Manning wins another one I hope that your little brother has three rings at the end of his career just out of spite I don't even like him but out of spite I hope he wins three or maybe even more. I don't really care because you are a classless, overrated player. I don't care about your records during the regular season. During the playoffs, you have choked and choked repeatedly. Anybody who wants to proclaim different and proclaim me as a hater, by all means, go ahead. But go look at the records. Go look at the games where Indy was favored. And how bad this man actually choked at his job. Before you claim it to be anywhere near the top. Nowhere anywhere is he near the top. Of a quarterback list. Can he make top 10? Maybe. Maybe. But he, nowhere is he anywhere close to Joe Montana. Or. Tom Brady. Those two men are one, two. However you want to, you know, have your personal bias towards any of them. Joe Montana. You know what? No. Joe Montana. And then we got Tom Brady. Right there. Tom Brady. And then we got Troy Aikman. Those guys right there are one, two, three in my opinion. But again, those are my generational picks right there. Those three men are one, two, three. Peyton Manning is nowhere near their caliber. Nowhere near. And I don't care what you want. 70,000 yards, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. During the playoffs, this man is a choke artist. He has been a choke artist, and he didn't do anything in the Super Bowl to even earn that second ring besides write the coattails of his defense. That's all he did. So for all the crap that I'm giving Cam Newton for losing the way that he did, F you, you for winning and then doing what you did after the game, you classless piece of shit. Straight classless piece of shit. All right, now, um, now that we got that out of my system, um, 
the commercials were weird. I didn't I didn't see the commercials being really as clever as previous. I mean, they had that puggy monkey baby or whatever the hell that dog monkey body baby leg creature was for Kickstarter. I mean, it was memorable because I can tell you what it was for. But like, I don't know. Like, I didn't I didn't I felt like this year's commercials just lacked. They lacked something. I don't know what it lacked. They just lacked something. Uh, the one thing that I can't comment on is Taco Bell <laughs> released a new product, the Kes... What is the hell is it called? The Kesalupa. The Kesalupa? Kesalupa? <laughs> Anyways, I tried it because they had a whole pre-order thing where you could try it on Saturday, the day before the Super Bowl, between 2 and 4, if you pre-ordered it online and then put it. And that was a total mess and try to get that figured out. But I figured it out with help from Wifey. And I got to try it. You guys can see the product here, and you guys can see me try it a little bit right here. And it's not bad. It's a Taco Bell product. And for all the cheese they show in the commercial, there's not that much cheese in that crust or in that whatever the hell you in this shell. It's not that cheesy. I honestly I ate like three quarters of the first one before I even realized there was any cheese in the shell. Like I really couldn't tell. Wifey was the one that said, "Hey, there's cheese in here. Like, look, it really." I had to look really closely to see the thin layer of cheese that was in the shell. And, I mean, that was as as close to the Super Bowl as far as I can comment on that part of it. And now that football is officially over, this will be, I guess, my last official vlog outside of maybe the draft and whatever big trades we might have or signings that we might have. And even those, probably I won't do vlogs this way. I am going to transition over um, at least for the rest up until football season starts again in September um, to do my video game stuff. I, I haven't done video game stuff in a while. Street Fighter V comes out on Tuesday. I'm so excited. Um, I'm a big nerd. I'm a big nerd. I'm a big nerd from the hood. I love my football. I love my sports. Man, Street Fighter V is about to come out. Ah! <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's it, everybody. Thank you guys for watching me all season. You know, from, from the little, you know, like 10, 15 view videos that I get all the way up to the 600 plus and even some that have reached a thousand throughout, you know, me doing football stuff. Thank you guys so much. And I, I, I do it because I like to share my opinions with you. I like to share my emotions and my, and, and just give you guys a part of my life and some of my expertise on some other manners that are not football related. And, and I say this a lot. I say this in a lot of videos. Thank you guys for watching, man. Like, I'm not making no money off of this, really. You know, I do this out of out of hobby, out of passion, out of love, and just to share, you know, have, have those one-on-one -on -one connections with y'all. And when you guys comment, and I can comment back, I just feel like, you know, even even if some of them can be somewhat negative, you know, those I tend to ignore sometimes. Um, not critical ones, but just the negative ones. Uh, you know, you guys can criticize me if you want, but if you want to have a, a conversation, we can do that. That's what this whole world is about. It's about conversating. It's about you know, evolving each other. It's about talking with each other, finding out what tick, what makes each other tick so we can just try to, to learn even the negative aspects of each other's lives so we can communicate and turn that into a positive and go forward and move and, and evolve as a people. And and that's what the, the whole goal of this channel, even if it was just video games, has always been about. Even when I am negative about stuff, you know, that that's just a trigger so we can talk about it. It's not a trigger for anything else other than to, to start discussions and conversations as a people. But for everybody who's comment, watched everything, thank you guys so much. It means so much to me. It always has and it always will until the day I hit the grave. <laughs> um, and you guys will probably see me in 50 years. <laughs> but yeah, this is Mr. KB. I will see you guys with all my video game stuff up, you know, going all the way until September. And um, thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.